Hello, uh, in this short video I'm going to show you how to insert images into Microsoft Word documents and how to wrap text around them. I'm going to be using Microsoft uh, Word 2010 but what I'm going to show would also work for 2007 as well. Well the first thing to do is to put the cursor somewhere in your document approximately where you want the image to be then go to the image tab and you can either insert a picture, this might be a photograph or something that you've um, taken with a, a, a camera and, and saved on the hard disk, you can insert that by using this button or clip art which is, the, uh, which is going to the built-in images uh, within Word. So I'll click on clip art and that brings up this little panel over here uh, and I can search for an image. So what I'm going to search for is, let's have a look at the word Holmes. This, this text refers to uh, Sherlock Holmes. I'm going to click on Go. Oh, actually, before I click on Go, um, I'm just going to look here and show you how you can decide what sort of media you're actually going to search for. You can search for everything, or you can search for just illustrations, these are like drawings, or photographs, or videos. Videos are, are really just um, simple animations, and they're, they're not really videos. Um, in fact, in, two, in Word 2007, that it's called, this is called animation, it's not videos. And then audio, you can look for audio files too. I'm just going to be looking for illustrations, that's drawings. Uh, and then I've typed in what I'm looking for, I'm going to click on Go. Well, there's not very much there, is there? Um, I'll choose that anyway, I'll choose that one. Click on it, and you can see what it does, it puts the image where the... Um, where the cursor was. I'm going to close this clip art panel down now. Now when you insert an image in Microsoft Word uh, its default um, state is what's called inline. That means it treats the image like a big letter. If I put the cursor in here, look, and move it, I can move the cursor across the letters and I'll also move the cursor across that image. Now that's not very very useful so what I'm going to do is click on the image and then go to Format uh, wrap text. I just want to show you that this that menu doesn't appear until I actually click on the image. When I click on the image and select it, you get picture tools, format, wrap text, and you can see the default is in line with text. I'm going to choose the next one, which is square. So this is square, and if you've got a square image, you can resize images by dragging the corners. You can move the image about by putting it in the middle of it and just dragging the mouse. It's always best to use the corners when resizing images because uh, it resizes the height and width together. Um, if you use these edge handles it'll distort the image. It's a good idea not to do that. Use the corner handles. Now when you've wrapped the text like this square uh, the image needs to be on the right hand side of the text or the left hand side of the text because if you put it in the middle it actually splits the lines and makes it illegible unreadable. So I'm going to put the image on the left hand side. So that's what square means. Uh, I'm now going to go to wrap text again and choose tight and you can see there when you choose tight then the text flows around the shape of the image itself. Now unfortunately it's always coming it's also coming out here and here as well. Uh, now different things I can, I can actually just pull the image out a bit like that or I'll put it on the right hand side there, you can see it does the same thing, you get bits of the text coming out, you can either drag it to the right. Or the other thing that you can do is, when you've got it selected, go to wrap text, and we've got it set to type, but I can go to edit wrap points. Now if you go to edit wrap points, it actually shows you the line that the text is wrapping up to, and you can grab hold of these little buttons, little black handles, and you can pull them out, and enlarge the area that the text can wrap to. So if I pull that down like that and then unselect the graphic, you can see the text is wrapping on the right hand side but it's not wrapping on the left hand side anymore because I've changed where the text can wrap to. Okay, so that's tight and that's also using the edit wrap points. You can choose if you want to through, if you choose through, um, this isn't a very good uh, graphic to illustrate this. I've, in fact, 
I've not really found much use for this through wrapping. Basically, if you've got a, an image with a hole in it, what, wrap, what through means is that the text will be visible through the hole. You won't be able to read it because it'll break the lines up, so not too much use. Uh, the next one, top and bottom, this is quite useful. If you choose top and bottom, you can move the image about and the text will stop when it gets to the image and restart after the image. So it comes to its top and then restarts at the image's bottom. Right, next one, behind text. Now because this particular image is uh, black and white, it makes reading the text quite difficult. I'm just going to put it on square again. You, what you can do with uh, this option over here, colour, you can actually change the colour of the image. So I'm going to choose to make it grey uh, and then go back to wrap text and say behind text. So there you get a better idea of how you might use this. Uh, I can even make the, the graphic a bit bigger. So you can use it rather like a watermark so you can read the text over the top of the graphic. I'm just going to change that wrap text back to square again and I'm going to change the colour back to its original black. The next sort of wrapping is in front of text, like that. Now, the image now is stuck right on top of the text and again is obscuring the text. Now, the only real use of something like this is if you want to put uh, the image in the margin or if you want to put it, if you've got like a space um, in your text like this and you want to put the image in it and you don't want to affect the text wrapping at all. So. I can put that anywhere and it, it's not affecting the text, it's not pushing the text out of the way. So that's in front of text. Uh, I'm just going to go back to square and I'm going to go back to putting it a bit over there. Let me just take out these extra spaces, make the image a bit bigger again, again using the corner handles, pull that down. Uh, and that's it. So that's a little overview of putting in images and different ways in which you can wrap text around them. Thanks very much for watching.